Chapter 21 and Status Stats, Name, Tsunaka Hanami Age, 17 Sex, Female Race, Human, Race Change Available Class Frowny Face Caster, Empty Level, 61 EXP, 2902061 424-10-000000000 HP, 468-480-468-480-18739 HP slash min, x2 MP, 129-015-129-015-10010.1 MP slash min Stamina, 100%, 768% per hour. Strength, 760.5, plus 80.5, x2. Vitality, 768, x2. Dexterity, 489.1, plus 91.5. Intelligence, 901.5, plus 254.5. Wisdom, 820.5, plus 174.5. Luck, 226.8. Stat points, 60. Money, 1, 723, 422, 045, 012 yen. Skills, Sprint LV64, 12%, pushing extra strength into your legs, you gain a temporary boost to your speed. Gives temporary plus 166% boost to dexterity costs 4.5% stamina slash min passively grants plus 31.5 dexterity, ID, create LV9, 28%, by pushing your prana upon reality, you can now create instant personal dungeons, similar to bounded fields. Possible instant dungeons, empty ID, slime dungeon, recommended LV5, ghoul dungeon, recommended LV12, desolate dunes, recommended LV15, goblin dungeon, recommended LV17, forest dungeon, recommended LV22, hearth of Deidrin, recommended LV30, reeve jungles, recommended LV40, uriel, recommended LV45. Next dungeon unlocked at LV12, note that special IDs require 2 days to recharge after you complete it, ID, escape LV9, 28%, by pushing your prana upon your instant. Dungeon, you are now able to leave your instant dungeons at will. At higher levels, this skill is able to break through other IDs, or even bounded fields. Reinforcement LV58, 12%, by carefully melding your prana into an object and filling any air cavities with prana, you can enhance the object's attributes, from its durability, to its sharpness and even its taste. Cost depends on the object all stats are x3.25 when reinforced all stats are x5.5 when an object broken. Passively grants plus 58 intelligence and wisdom, alteration LV7, 63%, by carefully injecting your prana into an object, you can alter its existence, down to its molecular and atomic makeup. Cost depends on size and complexity of the object. Using this on something slash someone too high leveled will damage you, passively grants plus 7 intelligence and wisdom. Mystic Eyes of Myriad Perception LV40, 12%, a pair of eyes granted to those who have awakened to their connections to the root, the well of all existence. A fragment of its infinity now resides in you, manifesting as a pair of eyes, a bright swirling blue. Through it, every and all things shall be open to you, and will understand any and all existence. Allows you to see the description of objects you glance at allows you to analyze things you see at a glance capable of viewing the history of any object, from its creation to the present using this on an object too high leveled will hurt you allows you to see through darkness and illusions your eyes will always perceive the truth, no matter what. Spinning Prana Bullet LV74, 11%, by shaping your prana into a bullet and spinning it, you fire a deadly projectile. Costs 13 MP every bullet fired you can scale up the size of the bullet, at an increasing cost passively grants plus 19.5 intelligence. OD manipulation LV73, 11%, you are now capable of drawing out your inner prana OD. While it may seem simple, the process of drawing out your OD isn't as easy as it might seem. With this, you can now begin your life as a magus. Passively increases OD control by 41% passively grants plus 37 intelligence and wisdom, Prana Grenade LV33, 45%, by forming a sphere packed with Prana, the thrown grenade will explode on impact and send several shrapnel. Costs 118 MP every grenade thrown passively grants plus 9.5 intelligence, spinning Prana Rocket LV21, 87%, by reforming and enlarging your, spinning Prana bullet, you fire a deadly missile that explodes on contact. Costs 190 MP every missile launched passively grants plus 11 intelligence, Prana Burst LV17, 0-2%, by pure force of will, you unleash the prana inside you as a burst to blow away any surrounding enemies. 
costs 363 MP every burst passively grants plus 9 intelligence. Gihen LV12, 11%, by adhering to the concept of destruction, you invade the object you touch with prana and blow it apart from the inside. Cost depends on how large and durable the object is passively grants plus 6.5 intelligence and wisdom, Prana Construct LV41, 01%, by molding your prana into a specific shape and holding its existence, you can create a construct of prana in the real world. Be warned however, as Gaia will actively act to suppress this anomaly, trying to erase the construct you brought into existence. Cost depends on the construct formed. Cost for maintaining the object depends on the construct formed. Passively grants plus 41 intelligence and wisdom, sense presence, hearing, LV43, 09%, a magus can sense the presence of others in their surrounding, manifesting as one of the human body's five main senses. You can now interpret others' presence as specific sounds. Maximum range, 645 meters. Sword Mastery LV82, 0%, with constant training, you begin to gain a mastery of swords. The skill you hold over your blade will become your enemy's downfall. Grants plus 92% to natural strength and dexterity when wielding a sword passively grants plus 41.5 strength and dexterity, axe mastery LV22, 0%, with constant training, you begin to gain a mastery of axes. The skill you hold over your axe will send you enemies tumbling away grants plus 42% to natural strength when wielding an axe passively grants plus 22 strength, intimidation LV15, 12%, by forcing your will upon others, you are able to intimidate your foes. Foes have a chance to be, intimidated, when used. Intimidated, foes will be unable to move for a certain period of time. Battle Continuation, LV Max, a flame that burns in the hearts of fighters of old, those whose spirits serve on battle, and those whose hearts shall never admit defeat. It invigorates them, strengthens them, letting them stand once more despite all the grievous injuries they may have sustained, and they do so, gritting through the pain. Once your HP hits zero, your MP can act as a substitute. Drains 100 MP slash minute, Stoicism LV22, 02%, also known as the art of not giving a shit. Basically allows you to ignore certain amounts of pressure and intent from outside. The potency of this skill increases with level. Blacksmithing LV67, 67%, a skill with the forge and hammer, the power to craft and mold iron and steel into shape, turning them into objects of use. Maximum rank of materials capable of being used, B+, Mystic Code Crafting LV21, 55%, a skill with the art of crafting magical tools, the power to craft and enchant an object with magecraft. Maximum rank of skills capable to be embedded, D, Prana Rocket Propulsion LV31, 34%, by ejecting a concentrated burst of prana, you can propel yourself into the air. Costs 35 MP slash minute to use current maximum speed is 122 km per hour passively grants plus 31 intelligence, handgun mastery LV48. 32%, with constant training, you begin to master the usage of the handgun. Your bullets shall seek and strike your enemies down. Increases all projectile damage fired from a handgun by 68% passively grants plus 48 dexterity. 9 lives LV27, 11%, a technique created by Hercules to kill the Hydra, a monster with a hundred heads. Though used initially with a sword, it has been developed to be used with other weapons, no matter they be a spear, a bow, or even a stick. Costs 40% stamina to use every 100 slashes passively grants plus 27 strength and dexterity, Morningstar, for he is the one who lives at the sign of the Morning Star. the birth of the universe is perhaps the greatest mystery of all. Its origin and workings unknown, and the figure who led such an event never known. But that matters not to you, for the light of the distant star fills you with power. The burning heat of the sun swirls in your fingers. Let the dawn begin. Attacks enhanced with this skill deals 1,500% damage to unholy and demonic enemies you gain intimate knowledge of the workings of the stars any skills related to the star attribute will have its strength increased by plus 100% and gain experience thrice as fast you can control gravity. Strength and reach depends on the amount of MP used, starfall LV23, 02%, for when the star falls, your judgment shall be nigh, casts a powerful pillar of holy light upon the enemy cost 1780 MP to cast deals increased damage against unholy and demonic enemies, damage increase based on the skill, attribute enchant, holy, passively grants plus 23 intelligence. Attribute enchant, dragon LV22, 12%, by imbuing the essence of your magic with draconic energy, you can now enchant any object or attack you are close to. 
Due to the source of this skill, EXP gain is doubled, attacks enhanced with this skill deals 320% damage to everything but, dragons, and the, divine, blessed by dragons LV Max, you are a hero amongst their kind, a beacon that pushed away the gnawing corruption. Now, their fears have been put to rest, and the world can begin to regrow anew, the cracked earth slowly healing from time. It is all due to you, and they give you their blessings, their wishes on your safe travels. Thank you, gamer. All dragons are relatively peaceful with you all dragon-based attacks are strengthened by plus 100% damage from all dragon-based attacks are reduced by 25%, magic resistance LV 73, 12%, as a being gains a mastery over the arts of magecraft, their bodies will become naturally in tune with prana. This is your shield, your defense against the powers of mystic arts. The strength of all magic spells under, rank B, is reduced by 50%. Voltaic charge LV 5, 86%, the sounds of distant thunder roar through the rainy winds, the burst of lightning striking down from the heavens above, burning anything it touches into ash. Cackling, jolting, it is the strength of nature, the wrath of the sky sent down from above. You now wield its power, and it has become your own. Grants you power over lightning, either creating it or manipulating existing lightning cost depends on power and intensity of lightning being created and controlled you are immune from being electrocuted when a lightning storm is occurring, all your stats are increased by 100 passively grants plus 25 intelligence and wisdom. Age of Babylon LV Max, for it is in the name of our king that we move onwards. In that time of peril, when God still walked the earth with men, dangers lurked close to the heart. But she came to rule over them, and her friend gave knowledge to the people, and with it, they grew, becoming a bastion in the torrent of demonic entities. Now their knowledge is imparted to you. May you use it well, gamer. When performing any acts of, crafting, there is no longer a chance of failure. When performing any acts of, crafting, all items created will always be ranked D or higher all skills of, crafting, gain experience 200% faster. Dash, crafting, skills count for all skills that create, blacksmithing, tailoring, crafting, etc. Call of Lightning LV6, 12%, using the powers you hold over lightning, you gather the clouds of the skies above, and with your call, they begin to crackle with potential. Costs 4850 MP to perform, 5000, 25 asterisk level, lightning storm lasts for 2 hours, Poison Demiorga LV3, 12%, Poison. It had been one of the first weapons we had cultivated from Mother Earth. It struck the heart, caring not for what strength and defenses they held. Now, its power is in your hands. Allows you to fire a bolt of energy infused with poison. Any, living, target struck will suffer under the poisoned, ailment. Costs 496 MP to fire. Enemies inflicted with, poisoned, will slowly lose their health. Their HP will decrease by 1.4% every 5 seconds. Dash, poisoned, can be cured. Skill upgrades needed to rectify this, abnormal status resistance LV22, 21%, by gaining resistance to multiple different debilitating effects, your body has gained a resistance to these negative effects. Provides immunity to all negative status effects of rank D or lower, first form, thunderclap and flash LV1, 0%, a single stroke Iedo, with the speed of light and the strength of a thunderbolt. The first form of an ancient blade dance, created and empowered by a breathing method created to slay monsters. Costs 10,000 MP to use deals 200% damage to, undead, or, demonic, enemies passively grants plus 5 dexterity. Natural body LV max, perfection in body structure, creating the absolute pinnacle of natural human strength. Thankfully, you won't suddenly become buff from using this, but your strength will increase many folds, and you will become the prime example of the pinnacle of human strength. Doubles, natural, strength and vitality, hearth of Deidran LV1, 0%, on your grave a world was made, and atop it legends were told. A noble phantasm created by Tsunaka Hanami, modeled with the legends and memories of an ancient dragon that ruled the skies. A phantasm that should not exist, but was impossibly created, and through it fate was rewritten. Costs 50,000 MP to use on usage, creates a giant dragon lightning, enchanted by the essence that creates it. The dragon will then charge a powerful beam before it lets go, firing a giant beam of concentrated plasma. Damage dealt to any enemy except, dragon, and, divine, is quadrupled. Enlightenment of the sacred fig LV1, 0%, reality is ever-changing, molded by the different views held by the world, but truth remains constant, written and kept within the Akashic records. Whether by words or numbers, science or magic, the natural of the illogical, the truth remains. 
The truth is powerful, a snippet capable of rending the strongest men broken in realization. Yet you persevered, took in the madness of realization and came out different, better. Due to the strange mechanics behind this skill, EXP cannot be gained through use. The way to gain EXP is currently unknown, all mental afflictions will be rendered null. All damage, unconditionally, will be reduced by 10% doubles, natural, HP regeneration. Cooking LV2, 12%, the simple act of preparing and turning raw ingredients into edible and tasty food. It seems however, that the world will always be split into two, those that can cook well, and those that cannot. Such is the law, apparently. The higher this skill becomes, the tastier the food you cook becomes, fishing LV5, 74%, a technique from ancient times, beginning from the simple act of catching marine animals with bare hands, all the way to the many sophisticated techniques now invented to catch fish. This skill only work with, fishing rods, fishing efficiency is increased by 25%, fishing rod, durability decreases 5% slower. I stare blankly at the crater where the cozy little house I awoke in used to be at. Smoke is still slowly wafting up into the air, a sign of a recent attack on the small construct. Thankfully, I was smart enough to create an empty ID over the entire place, so the damage I do here won't be carried over to the real world, but still. I mean, damage of this scale isn't all that weird. I could just cast a prana missile and create that crater. But the thing I fired wasn't a missile. That was a normal prana bullet, one that wasn't even spinning. To all that, I can only sigh. All my recent exploits gave me a bunch of bonuses, and my intelligence stat did jump to a staggering 901, but still, this is insane. Not only that, my other stats went through the same jump as well, and now I have to restrain myself to not suddenly speed off into the horizon or accidentally create gusts of wind when I get too excited. Ha, huh, the woes of the strong. So, while Gilgamesh is away, I'm doing my best to gain a semblance of control back, and, it's not as hard as one might expect. Especially with this skill. Mental Partition LV1, 12%, a combined skill formed from Memory Partition and Thought Acceleration, two skills used by the superior alchemists of Atlas. By breaking the brain's limitations, the mental strength of your brain is unleashed. Where you once had a mere one thought, you can now hold multiple. Where once your thought works at normal, it can go even faster. It's up to you to see how far you can improve. Due to the strange mechanics behind this skill, EXP gain is reduced to 30%. The way to maximize EXP gain remains unknown, you can now have two thoughts at once your thinking and reaction speed is increased by 10%. I actually found these two from the 10 skill books I got from that bundle I opened several chapters ago, then fused them in the compendium when the option came up. The 30% EXP gain is annoying, the 10% increase to thought and reaction speed is nice, but that thing about having two thoughts at the same time? Oh, BOI. Double speed, double reactions double calculations, double everything. Lord have mercy. But, no, it isn't as easy as I make it out to be. Getting used to having two separate thoughts in my head was very jarring, and it took me some time before I managed to fully adapt myself to basically having two inner voices speaking at the same time. After that however. Full speed ahead boys. The way I'm doing this is simple. One side of my body will be dedicated to one task, while the other side will be doing something else. One side's getting adapted to, reinforcement, while the other is trying to retrace the skill I had with, alteration. One's firing prana bullets like a machine gun and the other's destroying the landmass by lobbing grenades every second or so. You know, normal stuff. Since I started, it's been about three hours, and I've managed to regain most of the control I had. Of course, things like, Hearth of Deidran, and, First Form, Thunderclap and Flash, are still a bit unreliable since they're fairly new skills in the first place. Overall, a good three hours spent destroying the world. Curiously, I look all around me, seeing the giant craters all left smoking and the massive missing chunk of the sea that used to surround the island. Yep, definitely destroyed. But, now, this brings me to the startling realization of something I must do, something I've avoided for so long and done everything to push it away from ever coming into the forefront of my mind. Weaving, or as I previously called it, cloth making. It's something simple, but something essential. If I had this skill, I could have made many different things that could boost Shiro and my stats, giving us an easier time in the war. But, well, the war's over now, and all I can do is regret over what could have been. Not only that though, the thought of sewing always makes my chine freeze, making a chill creep up my body as I remember, uh, something. 
Something definitely happened in my past, but I can't remember. Something traumatic that caused me to dislike needles and sewing, but the memory is hazy, shattered into countless pieces. I just can't remember. It's a weird feeling, and I can't help but frown. I don't remember why I hate sewing, but I just know, like some sort of ingrained instinct buried deep within my psyche. Oh well. Anyways, let's begin, shall we? Exiting the, empty ID, the world returns back to normal, all the damage I dealt to the environment fading. As I sit down on the beach chair I made a day ago, I buy a nice couple kilograms worth of string. Bringing a portion of the string out, I create a small sewing needle from my prana. And stopped. I just had a thought, why should I do this when I have magic? I think about it for a moment, before I decide to try. There's nothing wrong with trying new things, right? So, instead of sewing the string with a needle, I instead let my magical energy flow into the string, coating all over the strands and making it glow a gentle greenish blue. Then, I begin to manipulate the strings, moving it to slowly sew itself into a different item. The process is surprisingly easy actually, almost feeling like I'm moving an arm or something, and me having two thoughts working at once sure helps as well. And then. Due to certain actions, you have gained the skill, magical weaving. There it is. It's not just normal, weaving either, it's magical. Which means I don't need to physically move my body, which means I don't need to interact with the needles, which means that I can be even more lazy. Yay for productivity. Now, then. Time to power level the shit out of this skill. Magical weaving LV 32, 22%, a simple act of interlacing strings of any kinds to create new things, used to create clothes, cloths, and many more essential things humanity has relied on in their time on this earth. Now, you've learned the same, except you know magic, and with your skills you've integrated this essential skill with magical efficiency. Maximum rank of materials capable of being used, see usage requires MPMP cost depends on time and material quality and quantity. Yep. Loving that 200% EXP bonus from, Age of Babylon. It hasn't even been that long. Just 5 hours of pure mental focus and not doing anything else, and I've gotten it up to this level. But then as soon as I went up to level 30, I seem to have hit a giant spike in EXP requirement, and now getting even a level takes around 40 minutes, with each level increase getting progressively more expensive. It's a similar situation to my, blacksmithing, skill, so it wasn't completely unexpected, but still, this sucks. Now that I can use rank C materials however. Tattered purple pelt, material, rank C, a magical purple pelt, torn in several places. You sense great magic from it, and the fur glistens with ominous purple light. It seems to be cursed as well, harboring malicious energies, but they are no harm to you. Note, dropped by, Atlanta. I can use this. For those that remember, I got this when I killed, Atlanta, back in that weird prison I got sent into in the first several chapters, and I've let it sit in the back burner for a while now. No more. It's time to use it. But what am I going to make from it? A shirt seems a bit underwhelming, making some sort of armor or shield from it just doesn't feel right, and turning it into a weapon won't do any good since I already have one. Hmm. I need an idea. Suddenly, an inspiration strikes, and I can't help but grin in excited anticipation. Because if this works, and it's a big if, then this will be really cool. Taking a deep breath, I stop my aimless wandering and sit back on the chair right next to the loom of the stars, the pelt already placed next to it to be used. Then, I reach into my inventory and pull out a handful of particular glowing rocks, each a bright blue with a visible white core. Spirit stones, materials, rank D plus a strange glowing stone. Within it resides what seems to be a spirit, one not quite mature enough to coherently think but not too young to not have sentience. It seems to enjoy sitting in the warmth of your hand. Note, gotten from, obelisk. While I was in, Uriel, browsing through the, obelisk, I found these weird stones and I just had to buy them. They sound interesting on their own, but with my mystic eyes, I can somewhat see what potential these stones hold, and just thinking about it makes my inner crafting maniac chuckle in anticipation. Placing the spirit stones together with the purple pelt, I close my eyes and let my magic flow across the laid materials. My magic flows through them, anchoring them to my prana, and with my preparations ready. I open my eyes, and my mystic eyes flare to life. Magic fills the entire ID as I begin twisting and molding the materials. The tattered purple pelt begins to spread, unwinding into many separate threads of magical fur, while the spirit stones are crushed into a near powder-like state and melded into the threads. It's going all according to plan. Until it isn't. 
The curses in the threads of fur begin to fight against the spirit-filled powders I'm trying to infuse them with, each side vying for dominance over the other. With my mystic eyes, it almost looks like a shouting contest between the two, with each side becoming louder and louder to try and overtake the other. I'm not really affected by it though. I've gone through far worse by this point, so the two fighting looks like a pair of children quarreling. But this needs to stop. Though my MP pool is large, and my mental stamina has taken a recent leap, they're still finite and I don't want to spend any more time and energy dealing with this. So, with the latent energy of, Morningstar, flowing through my circuits, I flush out both clashing energies, forcing them to collide. Slowly, the two opposing materials begin to combine. The crushed spirit stones seep into the magical threads of fur, and the deep purple color the threads have shift to a much brighter shade, decorated with occasional streaks of blue and green. The threads remain cursed, since that's where the pelt's power comes from, but it's cleaner now, more refined. Enchanted threads of magicka, materials, rank C++ magical threads created by fusing an unwound, tattered purple pelt, and a handful of crushed, spirit stones. The curse from the pelt remains, but it has been refined and strengthened, no longer simply lashing out at all it touches. Divine energy flows through it as well, and it glows with a soft radiance reminiscent of the ages of old. Note, created by, Tsunaka Hanami. With the materials made, I weave them back together, recreating them into the form I had envisioned in the beginning of this entire process. Finally, after some more weaving and magic imbuing, the creation process ends, and I hold up my new creation with a smile. Aglius, Scarf of Kaladin, rank B a fanciful and beautiful scarf, made from refining the pelt of the Beast of Kaladin. It glows with magic, lighting up in strange mystifying patterns. Though the history, Atlanta, imparted onto this pelt has been lost through the process of creation, the curses and powers held by the pelt remains, and they have been refined and strengthened, changed into something beyond what it had been. Note, created by, Tsunaka Hanami, take 5% reduced damage when worn when worn, all attacks are passively imbued by the pelt's curse, increasing their damage by 15% and inflicting the minorly cursed debuff, reducing their stats by 5%, plus 50 strength, dexterity, vitality, and intelligence when worn durability, 100%. Yeah, that's some nice equipment right there. The known effects are nice already, and there's two more unknown effects that I haven't found just yet, so there's still more to unpack in the future. But, for now, it's time to return to the real world. I can distantly feel several familiar presences returning to the island, and I doubt me suddenly disappearing will be good on their conscience. Oh! What an interesting scarf. You think so too? Hanami asks as sits atop the comfortable bed, rocking her feet back and forth and idly playing with the purple scarf she now has around her neck. Do they look good? Gilgamesh gives a small nod, and Hanami smiles, all the while the rest of the group stares at the girl. At the forefront, Saber can only sigh, not even bothering to question where Hanami had managed to gain another noble phantasm in such a short span of time. Trying to find out how the girl does things is like trying to ask Merlin to stop flirting and actually help her without pranking her. It's simply impossible. On that note, Saber takes a glance at her master, standing by her side and looking at Hanami with a small smile. Shiro had been worrying for the girl's health throughout the entire week, though it didn't distract him from helping take Ilya back from the Einsburns. Several days ago, she'd come up to him and asked, demanded, to know what his connection to Merlin is. After all, using his staff, his magic, and being able to deploy the Gardens of Avalon, it'd be impossible for him to not be related. After some hesitation, he finally answered, explaining how, Avalon, was implanted into him by Karitsugu to save him when Ingram Mainyu's mud threatened to consume him, and how he'd somehow begun entering the gardens to meet with the Magus of Flowers. There were obviously some things he left out, most likely because he didn't understand himself, so she left it at that. But knowing that it was Karitsugu who implanted, Avalon, into him left her feeling strange. She doesn't, hate the man, per se, but she doesn't like him either. Their relationship is cold, and the ideals they held far differed too greatly for them to ever see eye to eye. Oh well. Are you sure you're healthy, Tsunaka-san? Saber asks, and the girl turns to her, tilting her head curiously. What do you mean? Her eyes seem to say, and Saber purses her lips. Did you not destroy Ingram Mainyu from the inside out? Would that not have any lasting impact on yourself? Ah. She blinks, her eyes becoming slightly duller for a moment before she smiles. I'm fine. Well dash, not completely. Never will be. My mind and soul got a bit roughed up in the process. She says with a light shrug. 
but I'm alive, and that's all that matters. But she isn't so easily convinced, nor are the others. That doesn't ease our worries. Saber says again. Hanami looks to her, smiling faintly. It shouldn't. Things like this will never heal, and it'll be a scar permanently etched into me. She tilts her head slightly, her smile growing determined. But through trials humans persevere, through the calamities, whether wrought by nature or their own hands, they continue to push forward. Such determination is what makes us who we are, is it not? That was. Saber can only stare at the girl, surprised by the sudden change in the girl's aura. At that moment, it almost felt as if she stood before another king, one eyes peering into hers, discerning every and all lies she might have hidden within. Well, let's not bore ourselves. Tell me what you've all been up to. Then the atmosphere shifts, and Saber can only stare blankly at the sudden change. And Dash, is her master laughing? He is. Before she can act, Astolfo rushes forward, eager to tell his side of the story first. Saber silently resigned herself. It's night now, and everyone's mostly asleep, with one or two remaining awake. We'd all eaten some prepared bento boxes I bought from the item store, talked some more over what had happened in my one week long sleep, and then Gilgamesh brought in some wine, and then all hell went loose. Of course, Shiro and I aren't really affected. Shiro has Avalon, while my abnormal state resistance kinda makes getting drunk painfully hard. Nevertheless, hearing Francis spill out stories after stories was fun on its own, so it's all good. Now, I'm sitting on the beach chair I made a day ago, alone on a secluded island not too far from where everyone is. Just need some silent and alone time, you know? Of course, I'm never truly alone. Someone will always appear close, no matter what. Nah, Shiro? I hear Shiro hum beside me, silently asking. What do you plan to do now? He goes silent for a moment. Wherever you go, I'll follow. And leave the rest behind? Shiro turns to me, obviously confused by what I mean. I sigh. Shiro, not everyone will go to where I'm going. Francis wants to go explore the world, Castor wants to fully research and teach Waver, Saber and Gareth wants to go back to Britain to see where Camelot once stood, and so on. Not everyone's willing to leave and go to a strange unknown world with me. At that, Shiro goes silent, contemplating. He clearly looks hesitant, reluctant to not follow me, but the fact that he's even considering it brings some relief knowing that he isn't completely dependent on me. Then, what should I do? Go with Saber and Gareth, maybe even bring your family. I say simply. It'll be a nice way to relax with your family, right? They're not my family. He says with a frown. I turn to him. They aren't, if you don't let them. It's my turn to frown. Look, Shiro, they're clearly unsure on what to do. You're technically Karitsugu's son, Ilya already calls you her big brother, Irisville's been asking you to call her mother, and even Mia's interested in knowing you better. They're all trying their hardest to get to know you. Will you push them away, Shiro? He goes silent again, thinking of what to do. But I don't worry, because I know he'll go with them. For as weird and different everything has become, Shiro is still a part of the Nasuverse. He has connections here, anchors that are still alive, and new things he never knew he had. He has Saber back, Karitsugu's back, even if different than he remembered, he has a new mother, a new sister, and Mia, who I'm guessing will be the aunt. As for me, I was never truly a part of this world, a mere soul who drifted into this universe and was thrust into the perils of this moonlit world. And that's fine. Besides, I can go to you at any time, so there's no rush, right? I say with a smile, and Shiro nods slowly. We spend the rest of the night in silence. In the end, Shiro, albeit reluctantly, agreed to go on a trip with his newly acquainted family. They rid on Francis, Golden Hind, before they're discreetly dropped off in Britain. After that, Francis, together with Castor, Astolfo, and their masters traveled to the clock tower, mostly so that Castor can finally restock on materials she'd been sorely lacking throughout the entire time she's been back on this earth. Which leaves me and Gilgamesh, and since Gilgamesh wished to return to where Uruk once stood, I decided to tag along, you know, just for fun. But then a wave of magical energy came from Mesopotamia, one belonging to a certain familiar troll-loving vampire, and I had no choice but to hop on Gilgamesh's, the mana, and travel to Uruk. Because, hey, ignoring Zelrich would do you no good. Better get whatever he wants done with before the headache starts coming. So now here I am, casually sitting on Vimana's deck as I soar through the skies, brushing past the clouds and feeling the wind waft all around me. 
It's quite a nice feeling actually, just feeling the cold breeze fly you by. I guess it's something I've picked up over my many hours spent flying through the air with no regards for my own safety. As for Gilgamesh. Hmm, what an interesting thing you are. She's currently having fun with a PSP I bought from the item store the night before. The selection of games there isn't all that wide just yet, but I'll slowly fill it up as I go, just in case I get a bit too bored. Anyways, while I'm still on transit, I might as well plan for what I'll do next. Which, obviously, is to go back to, Uriel. I mean, I could go to the clock tower or something, but I don't plan on doing that just yet, especially if they know that I was heavily involved in cleansing the Holy Grail and becoming its winner. That aside, I'm planning on dropping into, Dunstadia, this time, not just to see how things there have changed, but also to check in on how Wanda's doing. Last I saw her she was an ample level 6, so I'm quite eager to see how she's improved. But first, with the ship beginning to lower from the skies, it's time to step foot on the lands of Mesopotamia, and find a certain lurking troll. Ah, I'll be back soon, Gilgamesh. I say as I ready myself to leap off the ship. Gilgamesh, still caught up by the PSP, gives me a half-hearted wave, and I simply smile as I jump off, activating, Morningstar, and flying off into the distance, following where the burst of magical energy was several minutes ago. As I near the ruins of what seemed to be an ancient city, I begin to descend, ready to turn around the corner. Hello there, Hanami-chan. And then the guy appears out of nowhere. Gah! I quickly bring myself to a stop, halting myself from crashing onto the man that had just appeared out of nowhere. A seemingly elder man, one who's reached the later years of life. Wearing a neat coat adorned by lines of silver and gold, holding a small amused smile, he looks like a polite, if somewhat rich old man. But appearances are deceiving, and especially so for beings living in the moonlit world. He may hold that mask before the normal masses, but before my mystic eyes, I can begin to see the depths of his power, and even that small fraction I can comprehend completely overtakes everything in the surroundings, energy ebbing and pulsing outwards in controlled rhythm. Kistra Zelrich Schweinorg, the wielder of the second true magic, kaleidoscope. Gosh dash, don't do that, please. And why shouldn't I, Hanami-chan? He asks, grinning, and I know he's going to be doing that several more times in the future. I sigh, lamenting what my future holds before turning back to the dead apostle. So, what's up? I ask, what do you need me here for? Hmm. He stares at me for a moment, his eyes peering deep into me, before he smiles. As expected from the, gamer, nothing truly phases you. Ah, right. Of course he knows about the, gamer. It just takes a bit to rattle me. I say with a shrug. After all, it's true, you know. I haven't become truly scared for a while now, so much so that my, stoicism, skill isn't even gaining any EXP. Well, that, and, enlightenment of the sacred fig, is awesome. I suppose so. He says with a cheer that's strangely infectious, and I find myself smiling as well. But you truly are unique. He then says, returning to his usual sly grin. Countless universes exist, and yet each copy of you holds a different fate, a different path taken, and each of yourselves reach endings far different to the others. Shouldn't there be identical copies of me though? Isn't that how it works? Like, if there are infinite universes, wouldn't there be another copy of this version of me? That is how it normally goes, but not with you. He leans closer, his red eyes glowing slightly. Whether because of your origin, or because of your inability to be tied down by fate, every single version of you differs. Ha! Huh. That's interesting to know. So I won't ever meet an identical copy of me? Hmm, I wonder how the other, me, all out there are doing. Did they partner with Shiro? With Rin maybe? Sakura? Perhaps even Kiriya? Gosh! Now that I think about it, had I done something different on the first day I came into the Nasaverse, things would have gone very differently. I can't really picture myself wearing a suit like Kiriai's though. Well, it's been a pleasure meeting you, Hanami-chan. He says, a grin stretching across his face. I'll be waiting for when you'll join me through the dimensional gap. Wait, dimensional gap? Isn't that dash? Oh, and take this. Pulling out a folded scroll, he tosses it to me, and I scramble to quickly catch it from falling. What's this? Just use your, observe, Hanami-chan. Hearing someone else say, observe, s rather strange that I blink the thought away, and activating my mystic eyes, I cast, observe, onto it. Remnant of Skypea, ID scroll, a book to unlock the, remnant of Skypea, ID. 
The ID will be accessible by ID create when the book is used. Use book. Y slash N. Eh. See you later, Hanami-chan, and just like that, Zelrich blinks away, disappearing with hardly a sign that he was ever even here. At least that's what it looks like through the naked eye. But I saw the way space curved, the magic twisted the fabrics of reality to tear a hole for him to jump into. It was beautiful, like a spiraling burst of rainbow light that collapsed into a single point to punch a hole through space-time. I guess that's why it's called, Kaleidoscope, in the first place. Going back to the ID scroll, I eagerly press, yes, and the scroll breaks apart, shattering into modes of light before it fades into my chest. ID, Remnant of Skypea, has been added. Nice, now. Holy shit, this thing's recommended level is 105. That's over 40 levels above mine. And this is one of those, special ID, S as well, so once I go out, I'll need to wait a couple days for it to allow me to enter again. Am I still going to enter? You bet I am. Not yet though. I need to tell Gilgamesh that I'll be gone for a few hours or so. So I fly back, retracing the path I took to go back to Vimana. Soon, the flying ship comes into view, floating idly just under the clouds, and I make my way there to see Gilgamesh slouching on her throne, still playing the PSP. Well, it's only been 10 minutes or so, so I guess she hasn't finished the game yet. Gilgamesh, mind if I disappear for a couple hours? I have something to investigate. Do not worry, I won't be going anywhere. She says with a nod, before she narrows her eyes at the portable console in her hands. Not until I beat this infuriating mongrel blocking my path. So she says, but she's smiling, so giving her the PSP to amuse her is a definite success. I just need to make sure she doesn't become a complete hermit. Now that might be harder. Well, time to go. Entering, Remnant of Skypea, reminder. Once you leave, the ID will be closed off for, two days. Whoa. Now this is cool. It's a bit hard to explain how this entire ID looks like, but it's somewhat like an ascending set of floating islands, each connected by hundreds of magical threads, rising from the dirt-like ground and attaching themselves onto the bottom of the islands above. And from threads dig to the surface, out the dirt on the island, and then rise to the islands above that one. The islands are mainly dominated by long stretches of dry dirt, with the occasional short tree and shrubs here and there. The sky around me is the coolest thing though. From where I'm standing now, it almost looks like I'm inside a giant sphere, with the edge painted as a morning sky. Lines of gold and silver stretch over the circumference of the spherical sky, shining with magics from when the gods still roam the land. And lastly, growling. Slowly, I turn around to see a monster, a being created from what looks to be a lion, a bull, and a snake, tied together into one being. Its body is shining, burning with intense magic that pushed out against the air around it. Ancient Chimera LV-155, HP, 25 MP, 10 10 Stamina. 88% an ancient form of the Chimera, a hybrid creature created by fusing several animals into one. Unlike its modern counterpart however, the beasts it came from are phantasmal beasts, and their latent magic has been combined into one. Note, Ancient Chimera, is the boss monster of, Island Tier I. Defeating it will grant you access to, Island Tier II. It growls at me, its red eyes burning with ferocious anger. At its presence, I merely scoff. 25 million HP, is it? 10 million MP, is it? Fool. I fought against Ryoji, a being with 50 million HP, one that can throw miniature suns like it's nothing, and lived. And I've become stronger since then. You think I'm backing down from this? Prana rocket propulsion. Lightening up my feet with Prana, I burst forward towards the Chimera. The distance between us is crossed in a second, and with the Chimera still too shocked to move, I bring out an ordinary sword from my inventory and deliver a powerful upward slash, creating a large gash across the Chimera's lion-like face. It growls and swipes its claws down, but I quickly jump back. The claw digs deep into the dirt, kicking up a cloud of dust on impact. Now, normally, I would have just used, Morningstar, and forced the Chimera down or something, but not now. If I keep using things to make my battles easy, I won't improve. And this guy, even though he's a nice level 155, it doesn't really mean much. Ryoji and the Tainted Heart I fought had an HP pool much larger than it, and their levels were unknown, meaning that my, gamer, system can't actually classify what their true power is. 
It may be over 90 levels above my level. But are its stats higher than mine? The chimera opens its mouth, and from it comes a wave of fire. It doesn't do much against me, my, reinforcement, coupled with, abnormal state resistance, making the fire's effect near nothing, and I simply run through the fire without much worry. The chimera reels back, disturbed by my lack of damage, and my mystic eyes flare to life. Within the chimera's body exists hundreds of weak points, each a bright star illuminated by my mystic eyes. With my arm fully reinforced, my blade moves, swerving and dancing through the air at speeds no normal human would be able to see. Deep gashes are made across the chimera, each slash connecting between the hundreds of weak points my mystic eyes had spotted. The beast roars in pain as blood explodes into the air, bursting from the hundreds of wounds I'd created. Critical hit. 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 Critty dash. I quickly shut down the burst of notifications, sending one final downward slash before I run past the injured beast. The chimera leans left slightly, but it stays standing, slowly turning to me with its teeth bared in anger. But I'm not done. Nine lives, bodily absolution, at my words, the many wounds I had created on the chimera light up with bright blue light, before the leftover prana my sword left behind violently explodes, digging deeper into the chimera and destroying even more of its body and depleting even more of its HP. HP, 12, 231, 984 slash 25, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000. Ha, huh, nice. Still, even 768 vitality isn't completely enough, huh? I wince slightly at the ache in my right shoulder. It's nice that I didn't wreck my body completely like I did the last time I used this, but to still feel the effects of it now. And with the added benefit from, reinforcement, as well? What kind of a monster had Hercules been to be able to execute something like this without breaking a sweat? Well, the chimera's still kicking, so let's end this, shall we? Turning around, I crouch down, making my right leg step forward as I close my eyes. With my sword at my hip, I draw in a misty breath, Baltaic charge, snapping through my body and filling my lungs, enhancing every part of my body. Gathering my breath, I bite down, letting gusts of steam escape as lightning courses through my system. First form. Gently opening my eyes, I burst forward. Thunderclap and flash. The distinct clap of thunder sounds as my sword is struck forward, leaving behind a giant scorching wound on the chimera's already riddled body. I land on the other side, landing softly on the dirt just in time to watch the chimera's body fall into two, the part where it had been cleaved still steaming against the cool air. You have slain, ancient chimera. 800 million EXP gained, you have gained, large synthesized soul chunk. The path leading to, island tier 2, has been uncovered. 800 million EXP from that boss fight, huh? I guess that's a suitable reward for killing something like that. Well, I guess others would have struggled a bit against that but I didn't, so whatever. Now, it's time to grind. By the time I came back to the real world, nearly two hours had gone by. Most of my clothes are burnt, and it's only thanks to, reinforcement, that they didn't outright disappear from all the fire, poison, lightning, wind, and other wonderful things that my clothes went up against. The ordinary sword I'd been using is now missing a blade, the only thing remaining being its hilt. I'm hurt, sore, tired, and everything else rolled into one. Overall, I'm pretty roughed up. Well, except my scarf that is. It's only lost 1% of its durability through all the chaos it went through. Seeing as Gilgamesh is still too taken into her games, I drop face first onto Vimana, uncaring for the slight pain it caused. With a sigh and shaky fingers, I open my equipment and switch out my burnt clothes for a new identical set. My trouble sated, I turn to face the afternoon sky and smile. Despite how painful and tiring this kind of stuff is, it's worth it. I leveled up four times, got some of my skills leveled up, and found some neat treasures along the way. But that's only one side of the coin. One the other side. Shards of Revenant, the broken pieces of the Revenant armor, one that broke when their durability hit zero. They're as good as useless now. There's this. It's actually something I completely forgot about until the notification popped up. I mean, when was the last time I actually saw the armor I wore? 
It didn't help that I can hide the armor too, which all culminated with the armor breaking mid-battle, creating quite a significant dip in my stats and making it a much harsher experience all around. But it isn't all that bad really. The armor was good, but it wasn't amazing. If I'm going to go up against stronger enemies, I'll need better armors. And, hey, what do you know? I have, magical weaving, to act together with, blacksmithing, now, so I think it's ample time for me to make a new set of armor, and maybe another set for Shiro to wear. I'll need to keep Shiro's armor light though, since he can't just place it into his, equipment, slot like I do nor can I make a, party, to give him access into the system. I mean, I know that my version of the, gamer, system isn't like the others in the wide multiverse, but the incapability of forming a, party, is the one that hurts the most. But, what can I do, right? I've survived this long, so might as well continue onwards with it. Either ways, Gilgamesh is still playing with the PSP, how is it still on anyways? Isn't the battery dead, her mind too occupied to realize that she'd moved so much until she was sitting upside down, her legs risen and her back placed on the bottom of the throne. I can't quite help but laugh slightly as I watch. Quiet down, Hanami. The ending of this tale is near. She shouts, an excited grin on her face as she watched the cutscenes play. I blink, slightly surprised that she was about to finish what was around a 60-hour experience in about 4 hours, but this is Gilgamesh I'm talking about here, so normal limitations don't apply to her. Well, as she says herself, she's a bit busy right now, so I'll simply move on to, Uriel, to see how, Dunstadia, is doing. And what if she completes the game before I come back, you might ask, but time flows slightly differently compared to the real world, so I don't think there'll be any problems. Entering, Uriel, set location, Dunstadia. Slowly, as the light fades away, the ample village of, Dunstadia, comes into view. Or, well, more like the city of, Dunstadia. For one thing, the island's size has increased, quite drastically actually. From what I can see with mystic eyes, the area is, about two, maybe three times bigger than last time. The buildings remained mostly in the same medieval style though, with houses made of wood, bricks, and rough stone. But what's most surprising is that they started to build underground. It's something I actually suggested Oswald to do, since the area under the surface can be used just as well as the area above, but I didn't think he'd do that so quickly. Still, the benefits of having an underground area is tremendous, so I can't blame the man. Now, to find where Wanda is. Ah, okay, found her. She's at the far northern end of the island, mostly training with her spear on her lonesome. Smiling, I begin making my way to her, greeting the people I pass by and deflecting the many praises and thank yous they shower me with. Soon, I come up to Wanda, who's currently a bit too focused on training her skill with the spear to notice me watching her from the side. Her body snaps back and forth, her arms moving from one place to another as she dances across the grass, her spear flickering and blowing gusts of wind. It isn't the best display of spearmanship I've seen, especially when compared against the lancers within the throne of heroes, but for a girl who've learnt this for about a week or two, this is quite an achievement. Not only that, but the forms and stances she takes as she moves is strange, different, and far too interesting for me to not use my mystic eyes on her. Name, Wanda. Age, 13. Sex, female. Race, human. Class, frowny face empty. Level, 11 EXP. 44 slash 1500 HP 1760 slash 1760 35.2 HP slash min MP 5261 slash 6820 30.8 MP slash min Stamina 45% 16% per hour Strength 24 plus 6 Vitality 16 Dexterity 31 plus 9 Intelligence 38.5 plus 9.5 Wisdom, 23.5, plus 9.5. Luck, 14. Skills Frowny Face OD Manipulation LV, 12, Reinforcement LV, 3, Wing Chun, Spear Arts LV, 6, Sprint LV, 7. EY. That's Nick Dash, wait, hold up, Wing Chun, Spear Arts. What the hell is that? Wing Chun, Spear Arts LV 6, a form of martial arts, originating from ancient China. Created not to emphasize strength or size, but speed and flexibility. The practitioner's body will be relaxed, gentle, yet carry within their strikes the power of a typhoon. Their movements are sharp, and the attacks of a master's are near invisible to the naked eye. Such techniques have now been implemented into the spear, the weapon striking with the same philosophy and belief. 
grants plus 16% to natural strength and dexterity when wielding a spear the spear's strikes have become sharper, cutting past 12.5% of the enemy's vitality passively grants plus 6 strength and dexterity. Whoa! Where did this come from? I mean, the things it gives are standard, but that defense pierce? It's currently at 12.5%, but if my math still goes strong, then it should come up to about 60% at max level. Her spear would cut through over half of the enemy's defense at that point. That's insane. How did she? Wait, didn't I give her a skill book on, Wing Chun? Oh. Oh damn. She learned from the book, got the skill, and then applied it on her spear, all without the aid of the, gamer, s instant skill system. Holy hell. To go back a bit, I got 10 mysterious skill books several chapters back from a bundle, and one of them, which was a skill book on, Wing Chun, I gave to her to see if she could somehow learn from it. Turns out, yes. Yes she can, and she can improve and combine it with other skills on her own. Which, in hindsight, kind of makes sense. The skill book is still a book one can read and learn from, so her learning something from it doesn't sound too far-fetched. Still, damn. Doing good there, Wanda. At my voice, Wanda snaps out of her focus, nearly tripping on her own leg as she quickly turns to me. And Miss Hanami. Hey there, I say with a small wave, and the girl quickly brightens up, running up to me with stars in her eyes. I can't help but smile at the girl's enthusiasm, and I gently pat her head. How've you been doing? Sorry, I couldn't visit for a while. Had some, important things I needed to finish back at home. I'm fine. Everyone has been doing well after you came. She says, before she frowns slightly. But are you sure you can come here? Aren't you still busy? Hmm. Oh, don't worry, all's done and good, so I'm free right now. I say, giving her head another gentle rub. Then, I grin. On that note, are you free right now? Wanna go grind some monsters? Hmm. She nods with no hesitation, and so I did as I say, casting, ID, create, and causing the world around us to shift. The skies turn dark, the ground expands, and modern buildings seem to sprout from the ground. All over the ID, groans can be heard as the undead begins to crawl out of the ground and onto the roads. The, ghoul ID. Man, this makes me feel all nostalgic. At my side, Wanda is silent, her mouth open as she stares at the modern setting she finds herself in. It's incredibly cute, but I gently push her jaw back close and smile. Alright, no time for gawking, Wanda. The ghouls are coming. Aya, right. She swiftly snaps to attention, bringing forward her spear as ghouls begin to come out of the alleyways and into the streets. A fairly large group of undead forms before us, numbering around 80 ghouls, all of them most definitely brought here because they felt the magical energy I was leaking into the air. But that's fine, because that simply means more EXP for little Wanda over here. With the enemies in sight, Wanda moves, rushing forward and stabbing her spear right through one of the ghouls. It doesn't get to say much before its head is ripped off as her spear snaps to the left, puncturing through the eye of the ghoul on her left. And so begins the slaughter, with Wanda rooted in place as her spear snaps back and forth, piercing and tearing through with speed and precision. It's definitely not the normal way to hold a spear, but it's definitely effective. Although, when I try to analyze it with my eyes, I simply come up blank, with no skills for me to gain. Is it because it's such a new skill that my eyes can glean nothing from it, or is it because of some other factor? A problem for another time I suppose. After some time, and with one last ghoul stabbed through the skull, the battle finishes. Wanda lets out a short breath, heavy yet not quite tired. I smile. So, shall we continue on? With another short breath, the girl smiles. Yes. And so we did, with me guiding us through the rural cityscape and letting Wanda carve through the hordes of ghouls coming our way. As we go on, I let my prana leak out, just to alert even more ghouls to come and to bring more EXP for Wanda to power grind through. Overall, it was very effective, too effective perhaps. Wanda, for as fast she is, still got hit quite a bit, and her clothes suffered quite heavily through the many attacks. It didn't help that her skill with, reinforcement, was still fairly low, which meant that casting the magecraft on her body would be a bit too dangerous. Her spear didn't fare any better, with the original thing being reduced to about half its length, and the sharp edge it had now gone, broken away when she was forced to fight the ghoul culmination, test number 314. Still, for how limited her current set of skills are, I'd say she dealt with the entire thing extremely well. So, for now, I've given her a new set of clothes and let her rest. 
she's more than earned it by this point. I'll leave the things I want to teach her for a later date. On the other hand, I'm currently busy with making a new spear for Wanda to wield. It's nothing crazy, since I do want her to be able to hold it in the first place. It's just a slightly longer pole arm, this time a halberd to better fit with the way her spearmanship is now, and made from, thorium, which is basically, steel, but more magical. I've also enchanted it with, Gihen, just to give her an even easier time shredding through enemies. Which now leads me with nothing to do. I mean, I could go and kill some monsters, but I think I've seen enough action for today. I could also start making armor for Shiro and I, but I, I don't know, I just don't feel in the right headspace right now, so it probably won't turn out as good as I want them to be. Hmm. Maybe I should just review the other seven remaining mysterious skill books. Actually, yeah, why the hell not? Brigand Counter, skill book, requires 400 intelligence and wisdom to use, through sending an overpowering burst of prana, you can counter an incoming attack, sending your own back at the enemy. Crude. Yes. Inefficient. Perhaps. Does it work? Definitely. At level 1, costs 30,000 MP to cast repels any attack rank A plus or below if the counter hits, the enemy will be stunned for 10 seconds. Note, stunned effect can be reduced or negated by certain enemy types and skills. This is the first one, and, well, it's not bad, per se. The effect itself is quite strong, and I can definitely see it working if I put some training into it, but as the skill itself says, it's inefficient. It'd probably get better the higher level it becomes, but that initial 30,000 MP cost is the final nail in the coffin. I mean, not even, thunderclap and flash, costs that much to use. I'm probably just going to sell this one to the, obelisk, or give it to someone else. I don't know. Air step, skill book, requires 150 intelligence and 100 dexterity to use, by creating a platform of solid air under you, solidified by your magical energy, you are able to leap up into the air from seemingly nothing. Chain together, and you'll achieve pseudo flight. At level 1, costs 200 MP every platform created passively grants plus 1 intelligence and dexterity. This is actually quite a nice skill, one that has a lot of possible ways to use it. It's just, well, I have both, Prana Rocket Propulsion, and, Morningstar, to solve the flight issue, and, Morningstar, can pretty much do everything this skill can. Not gonna throw it away though. Since I now know that other people can actually learn from skill books, I might just give this to Shiro, just to give him some way to battle in the air. Next. Gravity Well, Skill Book, requires 200 intelligence and wisdom to use, by the use of ancient magic, the space around you distorts, twisting, and your enemy is seemingly pulled close to you by an unseen force. At level 1, allows you to forcefully pull an enemy close to you. Current max distance between you and the enemy, 50 meters costs 5000 MP to use passively grants plus 1 intelligence and wisdom. Again, it's quite a nice skill, just something, Morningstar, has made redundant. It's definitely a powerful skill, especially for melee fighters who need to pull an enemy close. Shiro would make use of this quite well, though I think Wanda might as well, so I'm still not sure what to do with this one. Sword Dance, Skill Book, a skill, created for inhuman companions, modified for human use. By synchronizing with the steel in your hands, the blades you hold, you form a bond. Its strength becomes yours, and your strength becomes theirs. At level 1, at use, when wielding a sword, all stats will be increased by 100%. This effect can increase in certain unique circumstances. Costs 5000 MP to initially use, costs 500 MP slash min to maintain. Passively grants plus 2 strength and dexterity, note, gaining this skill will irreversibly alter your soul. Use with caution. Now, this one's quite special. The skill name seems rather familiar actually, but I can't quite remember where it came from. But that aside, all stats doubled when wielding a sword, at level 1. That's insane. But. I'm not going to use it for myself. Why? Well, first off, for my skills with the sword, I'm not a sword main. More importantly though is that final line about how it'll irreversibly alter my soul. I have a feeling it simply means changing my origin, and as weird and unpredictable, change, is as an origin, I don't think I'm a changing that anytime soon. That aside though, it's cause this one's for Shiro. I mean, Shiro's already attuned with swords, might as well add this onto his repertoire of skills. Wings of Anemo, skill book, a blessing given from the god of wind, magic given the form of a pair of magical wings. 
Through it wind is gathered, and through it one could fly and attain dominion over the skies above. Max level at use, once the wings are created, you can fly costs 1000 MP to initially use, 100 MP slash min to maintain. Once again, quite a good skill, just one that's sadly made redundant by, Morningstar. The unknown bit of text is quite interesting, but the fact that it'll remain at max level means that it won't improve, so there isn't really any point for me to use it. I'll probably just give this to Wanda, since, you know, she lives in a world made of floating islands and all. Armory, skill book, a slightly more limited version of the, inventory, but streamlined and maximized for absolute efficiency between storing and switching through the many weapons it can store. Automated firing of weapons might even become possible, but such skill would require massive amounts of time and effort to master. Max level at use allows the user to store and bring out weapons at moment's notice. The number of weapons and types of weapons capable of being stored is infinite. However, be careful not to forget what you've stored. And here's another special one. It's, as it says in the description, a less flexible but more efficient version of my inventory, one that can even be used like the Gates of Babylon, with enough training and time. Just like the rest, not too sure what to do with this one, but I'll definitely save it for someone else in the future. Last but not least. Chain Dragon Lightning, Skill Book, a lightning spell classified as a tier 7 in the world of Yggdrasil. A powerful burst of lightning shot forth from the caster's hand, taking the shape of a dragon that'll strike your enemies down and burn them to ash. At level 1, fires a dragon made of lightning, dealing AoE damage in a small radius. Costs 1000 MP to cast passively grants plus 1 intelligence and wisdom, note, due to, Voltaic Charge, and, Hearth of Deidrin, this skill will be nullified upon gain. There's this. If my memory serves me right, this is a spell from, Overlord, right? Yeah, the one Nabe used against that undead dragon thing in the first couple episodes. Much like the other skills, it's definitely good, great even, and the passive stat boost it gives is always a nice cherry on top. It's just, Voltaic Charge, and, Hearth of Deidrin, basically does the same thing, nullifying its effect. Which is, weird, actually. I mean, I have, Prana Bullets, and, Prana Construct, at the same time. Why doesn't, Prana Bullet, get nullified by, Prana Construct? Also, why does, Gihen, exist despite me having, OD Manipulation? Shouldn't they be combined into one? Is the, Gamer, system starting to become stingy or something? Actually, I can kind of see that happening, for some reason. Hmm, that's something I should definitely ask System when she comes. On that note, I haven't heard from System in a while. Wonder what System's doing right now. For now, I think I've spent enough time grinding for the day. I got access to a new ID, fought some incredible monsters and leveled a bunch, and spent some time running through some old IDs with Wanda. Overall, quite a chill day. It's time to go back. If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later, bye bye.